My lords, I too would like to thank Baroness Cox for uh, securing this very important debate. If we want to address any issue affecting society, we need to understand the cause. For example, cholera was endemic in the mid-19th century and was only effectively tackled when it was shown to be linked to poor sanitation and contaminated drinking water. The problem of gross physical abuse of young women and children by organised grooming gangs also affects lives. And to tackle it, we need to identify responsibility and motivation. To me, it's a matter of real concern that instead of pinpointing responsibility, the media, government and other authorities, including the police, absurdly mask the identity of the perpetrators out of misplaced political correctness, calling them Asians. We don't refer to the perpetrators of the genocide against Jews as Europeans. Why diffuse blame for the actions of mainly Muslim grooming gangs on innocent communities? My lords, I believe that the real problem lies with negative cultural attitudes which attach themselves to religion. Negative, demeaning attitudes to women are still prevalent all too prevalent in the subcontinent of India. We, and particularly in that part of the subcontinent which is now Pakistan. The Sikh religion started in that part of the world and the Sikh gurus taught that condemned the uh, demeaning attitudes towards women, stressing their dignity and complete equality. Despite such clarity of teachings, some cultural attitudes, negative cultural attitudes, sometimes still exist, even in Sikh families, as they do indeed in Western society. The presence of grooming gangs in the Muslim community arises from these negative cultural attitudes to women, which lead some to believe they are part of the religion, and that there's nothing wrong in the demeaning treatment of women and girls, particularly those outside the community. Having identified the perverse, cultural, uh, the perverse culture behind grooming gangs, what do we do to tackle the problem? A more rigorous policing application of the law can help. But it cannot, um, it, it cannot eradicate deeply ingrained cultural attitudes, and well-meaning attempts to do so can easily be seen as an attack on religion. My lords, it is the Muslim community, particularly Muslim leaders, that must take the lead. It's not easy to take on centuries of negative culture wrongly attached to religion. We must all help in this, in, play, in helping these leaders place the teachings of a great faith in the context of today's times to stamp out the scourge of sexual grooming with its negative impact on victims and on the fair name of Islam.